I'm almost ready. Just give me one sec. Dean Lonigan promoter Pacquiao Hill. Let's just see that Pacquiao Entourage has come through. It's, um, he's here, he's landed. It's a reality now, it's not too far away. Look, it's an exciting time. We've got, uh, we're just touching on 45,000 tickets sold at some point. We've got probably 10,000 to go. And uh, we'd like to make this one of the biggest boxing events of all time in the world this year. I think we're probably second only to Tinsco Joshua, which sold 90,000 tickets. Distributed into something like 159 countries around the world. Most exciting fight, I think, in Australian boxing history. And what you are going to see here is not an overblown fight, but it's a fight that's going to live up to its hype. You know, you've got two guys, styles make fights. You've got two guys who come forward, two guys who love to fight. This is not going to be a fight, it's going to be a war. And uh, I think you'll find that this is, uh, whatever you, whichever way you watch this, whether it's on paper, if you were a pub or you're going to the uh, venue, this is going to be, you're going to get value for money, you're going to get two guys who are uh, giving it their all, and they, you've got one of the legends that potentially has reached his prime, and uh, is he on his way down, and you've got a young fella, you know, has he peaked, has he got to his peak, and is he going to be good enough to take on one of the all-time greats? So uh, I think it's a real rocky story. I think it's something that uh, all of Australia will be proud of on uh, July 2. You're going to see the birth of a brand new Australian sporting superstar. We saw the scenes here as a crowd, like 150, 200 in the entourage. Back home, though, the figures are enormous. It's almost saturation. When this guy fights anywhere in the world, all the Philippines are Well, with, you know, I've been told that up to crime stops and up to 90% of all the Filipinos sort of try and tune in to watch Manny Pacquiao fight. You know, he's not only uh, Manny Pacquiao the boxer, he's Manny Pacquiao the philanthropist, and he's also Manny Pacquiao the senator. So uh, he carries a lot of mana in his country, and uh, the uh, Filipinos love him. And it turns out Australians love him too. Let's not forget, Jeff Horn uh, fought in front of 1,500 people the last time he fought here in Australia on his own card. And uh, now there's 55,000, so it's obviously uh, a bit of a Manny Pacquiao effect, but also Chief Horn get to be well known, and I think we're going to see a great upset come July 2. Just on that, it does seem like the, the, the belief, and I've been with the Horn Cap myself for a few days, there's a growing belief that this could be not an upset anymore, maybe he's got the, he's got the goods to do the job, hasn't he? I've been talking to a lot of people who know about boxing, and a lot of them are starting to say, you know, first I thought it was a 70-35 Pacquiao's way, we're sort of 60 40, we're now like 50 50. You've got people like Jeff Fennick who really know their boxing and saying that uh, Jeff Horn's you know, got a real chance of winning this thing and that should win it based on the fact he's going to be a lot better and stronger. And uh, he comes with a style that, um, what is that, uh, unbroken pressure fighting, I think, or broken pressure fighting, Ian Rushton calls it. All I know is this Jeff Horn hits hard and you don't want to get hit by him. I mean, he caught in front of 1500 last time. Is there a chance that this crowd is a bad the last time he fought in Australia, he right, there's only like 1,500 people, but he did fight New Zealand in front of 10,000 on the Joe Parker undercard. So he's used to big crowds because he's been there before. And he, the bigger the crowd, the better he fights. You know, it was his best performance against Ali Fanek in New Zealand. And I think you'll find that uh, come you know, July 2, Jeff Horn will step up to the plate and it will be a, uh, a rousing time for the Australian nation as they, uh, we have the birth of an Australian superstar. How confident is the Pacquiao camp? Look, the Pacquiao camp are overconfident. We've heard nothing out of Freddie Roach except that uh, he's going to knock the pack out and knock Jeff Horn out. We're looking forward to the next fight. This is just a sort of a speed bump. And those are all the sort of noises you want to hear coming out of the pack out camp because hopefully they haven't taken this too seriously. And uh, come July 2, they'll not understand they've made a major mistake. We saw some uh, footage come through from uh, pack out leaving uh, the Philippines, military escort, red carpet. Is, is that the way they, they really look at this man as the local hero? Well, Manny Pacquiao has been a superstar for the last 10 years in the world of boxing and probably in the Philippines for the last 15 years. So uh, he's an absolute superstar in the Philippines. He, you know, he's a multi multi millionaire. He lives in a gated community, you know, a, I would say a gilded community. And, uh, you know, you've got to ask the question, why is he still doing this? I guess he still loves it. And uh, it's going to be hard to beat that for sure. He's got a private jet, he's chartered his own flight, just driving a 2006 Mazda, so sort of talking about like that. It's a bit Look, of difference there. This could be a life changing uh, event for Jeff Horn, and in fact, I think it already is. You know, Jeff Horn's, uh, the amount of money he's making for this fight is enormous compared to what he's made in the past, and on top of that, if Jeff Horn wins this, you know, his career earnings 
over the next sort of five years will just go through the roof. He's going to become, you know, one would like to think in one or two years he doesn't have to work ever again, you know, if he goes well. So this is a life-changing event for Jeff Horn. He knows it, and uh, I think he's going to grasp the opportunity with both hands. And just yourself, you mentioned Parker before. You've been promoted some clients now, and you're well known in the game, but this is obviously this is the biggest, oh, biggest look, show you put on. This is the biggest event our company's ever put on. You know, we do the NRL all from nines, and I think we had sort of 41, 42,000 people for that when we had the first incarnation. Well, we certainly didn't go out to 150 countries around the world, and uh, we've already got 45,000 tickets gone, so another 10,000, and you know, we're going to have an event that all of Australians are going to remember for a long time. And I ask you the question, when you look back and Jeff Warren has raised his hands in victory on July 2, you know, where, what, what are you going to say when you ask the question, where was I on July 2, one of the great Australian sporting victories took place? And uh, with any luck, you'll say I was at Suncorp Stadium because it was just an amazing day. How big is it for Australian boxing for America to Oh, just to give you an idea how big this is, you know, ESPN is taking this fight live. Now, ESPN going to 90 million homes in America. They're bringing down Stephen A. Smith, who's one of their biggest commentators, to build this fight up. They're also bringing down Timothy Bradley, who's fought Manny Pacquiao three times. And Bradley's still fighting, and you know, one day Jeff Moore might fight Timothy Bradley. And then ESPN's doing big build-up shows on this. Um, they're taking this very, very seriously. It's the first in a number of fights that ESPN are going to be uh, broadcast by Bob Arrow and World Class World Title fights. And this is probably the biggest, uh, the biggest fight on free to air or subscription for a very long time in America. And at the back end of this, Jeff Wolf is going to be not only an Australian superstar, but he's going to be a star in America. And it's a kind of two the Queensland like government, you know, weighing everyone's neck together. And Queensland, and it's going to be the tourism event. Well, look, the tourism events Queensland, which is the state government, and also uh, Brisbane Marketing, which is Brisbane City Council. They'd be nothing short of fantastic. They're, they're simply the best partners we've ever worked with from a sponsorship point of view. They're by far and away the best partners from a government point of view. And I look forward to having many more um, events put together with these guys. If you have a look, you know, it's an absolute blockbuster for Queensland over the next month where you've got this massive fight which is going across the world and also massive interstate uh, visitorship. And you've got State of Origin going on, and you know, they're one all. So the Queensland Government and uh, Brisbane Market, you know, they know what they're doing. Well, I mean, State of Origin didn't see game one. I think that's because of the fact that... I really don't know. I mean, it's, uh, you know, you get a lot of product out there with State of Origin. I can guarantee you this State Game 2 is going to be sold out. Well, thank you. How's thank that you. Yeah, hey, sorry for the waffle. Are you with the... Uh, uh, oh, right. Are you, 